Hi students, and welcome again to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that your week has gone well, and I hope that you're looking forward to a fantastic weekend. Welcome Fuong. Hi Alexi, nice to see our members joining me back for this listening class. Uh, welcome Nipa. Hi Dilpreet. Um, students, uh, this um, class is about IELTS listening. Um, and uh, we are going to be focusing on parts one and two. And the topics will cover uh, gym membership and a little bit about Canada. In this case, it will be a uh, travel show about visiting the city of Calgary. So uh, stay tuned for this. And uh, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there for the general IELTS. Check us out at gieltshelp.com. These are the websites we use to power these live classes. The listening audio materials practice exams that you are going to use today in this class come from these websites. Um, this is a subscribers chat class, so make sure to subscribe so you can join the chat and share your answers uh, with me. Um, as you will see, the websites look like this. This is our Academic IELTS website here at aehelp.com. You can click this big red button that's just right above my head there uh, to access the Premium IELTS course. It's a one-time payment for life time access. We are an IDP affiliate. We're a British Council partner. We're an IELTS test registration center. I'm a certified British Council agent. So you are in great hands with us. Uh, Ulu Gbek, I'm going to tell you strategies and tips on how to improve your listening results as we go through the listening test today. Um, for general IELTS, it's gieltshelp.com. Now, students, the listening exam for both the academic and the general are the same, okay? So, testing your ability to listen is the same for academic and general. Uh, click the big red button here. Again, it's a one-time payment for lifetime access, okay? So, for general IELTS, it's right there. Um, and you are good to go. Uh, when you click that big red button, uh, you can use the code OVER7. This is coming from one of our more recent video releases on YouTube. We want you to get OVER7, so the discount code is OVER7, um, and then you will see the uh, information here. It doesn't cost a lot. Again, it's a one-time payment. It's lifetime access, so you're good to go. Um, students, uh, we have apps for you as well. The apps link to the websites, so you can uh, use the app to interact with your web content. Academic IELTS help, general IELTS help, check those in your app stores. Instagram, IELTS underscore A help, G IELTS help. Um, Instagram has videos, tips for you as well. Uh, for your IELTS test, and if you have questions, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. Okay, either one of those emails uh, will be good. And um, Amazon has books, uh, our exam books. Um, you can get the audio materials when you buy the books as well, of course, uh, for the tests. Search for AE Helps Academic IELTS and GE Helps General IELTS in Amazon. All right, students. So right now, listening uh, for subscribers uh, to join the chat. Tomorrow, we'll have speaking part two and speaking part three at about the same time. So uh, check in for those lessons. Um, and uh, when you have time, check out our uh, recent uploads on the channel. Uh, here's one for you. Just going to put that into the chat. Uh, it's a really good speaking practice video, so check that out. Let's uh, do this color instead. And there we go. All right, um, listening strategies, everybody. Let's get right into it. So uh, we're going to uh, do some listening. We're going to answer some questions. And the first strategy that I have for you today um, is to look at the 
So strategy one, let's just call it one. Uh, look at the topic of each listening part. Um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, think about the information, visualize the information. Okay, all right. So see the information in your head. You're allowed to do that. If your exam invigilator says, oh, don't turn to the other parts or only look at part one, um, they didn't get good training. Uh, they should not be saying that. You should be allowed. Now, don't argue or fight with them, but after you do the exam, you can definitely make a complaint that your invigilator didn't let you uh, look at the other sections. There's no rule that you're not allowed to do that. In fact, in the computer-based exam, you can easily click to any of the sections as soon as the instructions start. So if they didn't want you to do that, they would make that impossible, but they don't. They allow you to do that. So uh, in the paper-based exam, of course, that should be no different, okay? And usually it's not a problem, but I have heard some students like, well, my, in my exam, the person told me, no, don't look at the other sections. Oh, no, it's not how it works. They need better training, okay? All right. Uh, Philo, visualizing is the real deal. Let's take a quick look at uh, the uh, listening that we're going to be uh, doing today. So here is uh, listening section one. They call this part one now since 2020. They call them part one, part two. It's just so you don't get confused between listening, reading, writing sections. They don't want to use the same words. They're calling it part one, part two, which is fine. Um, and uh, for our websites, this will be CD2 track one. Okay, that's how we categorize um, the, the different uh, audio tracks, okay? Now, another difference since 2020 is you do not have this kind of an example like uh, length of membership three months. So unfortunately, you don't have that bit of extra time to think about the information, but it's not a big deal. Okay, so you'll see some YouTube videos that are, that are older and they'll be like 2020 big changes to the listening section. Little changes, little changes not big changes, they don't matter much, okay? All right, so no example and called part one instead of section one since 2020. It's just a little fix to make it better for everybody. Okay, and then we look at the, the topic of part one and it says gym membership application form. Okay, so when you visualize this, you see this topic, immediately you should uh, see the uh, information, there's your eyeball. Okay, you have some nice long eyelashes. Um, and you see the information. So what do you see when you see uh, gym membership? What do you visualize? Okay, this is a question to you. So uh, yes, it's listening and you're listening to my voice and you will listen to the audio soon, but it's also interaction. So what do you see? Um, when you see uh, the topic of gym membership, In part one, what do you see? Uh, Raquea says, two people having a conversation. Abdul says, gym and exercise. Uh, Hikmatillo training. Bogdan says, application form. Sarah says, somebody trying to enter the gym. So Sarah, they're like smacking the door, like let me in the gym. I need to get to my protein milkshake and those weights over there. No, I'm, I'm kidding with you. By the way, thank you, Sarah. Welcome our chat moderator. I wonder if Chen's in here as well. Maybe not this class. Good to have you here with us. Um, Chayani says, gym application form. <laughs> Harjot says, I'm doing a bench press. <laughs> yes, you are, Harjot. Um, I like it, okay? I like Harjot's answer. He's doing a bench press. Yeah, see yourself. Okay, good visualization includes you. So I am talking to a beefcake um, who is also the admin and uh, filling 
out a form at a, a Gold's Gym. Let's go for the big guys. Uh, at a Gold's Gym. And I see all the gym equipment. Okay. Uh, Ratul says, Gimrat. Yep. All right. So muscles. Good. Visualize. Don't be shy. See the world. It's beautiful. Um, and be in it. Okay. You're beautiful. Be in the world. Okay. So um, nice. Okay. Be there. Be you. Okay. Be in the gym. Fill out the application form. You're talking to this muscular dude or this muscular gal and you are excited to join the gym and become fit for the summer. All right, good. Now you're interested. Uh, beefcake means a very muscular person. Okay, it's a person with a lot of muscles. <laughs> yeah, Lucid says, I'm jacked, I'm buffed. Okay, <laughs> all right, and you're, our John says, and I'm shouting. Good. All right. <laughs> Pima says, now I'm ready. Okay, good. So visualize that. Why is that important? So you might think, oh, Adrian's being silly. But no, I, I'm not being silly. Uh, when you see information, when you are in the information, when the information is detailed, I promise that you will understand it more. You will be able to think about it better and answer questions more accurately and faster, okay? Hick Matillo's having a workout with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Good. Absolutely, Sarah. You start thinking about more information in connection to the topic, definitely. Uh, humans are visual. We see the world around us uh, primarily, so we need to use that tool of vision. Uh, to the highest level in the IELTS exam, okay? All right, so we see it. Um, so we see the gym membership, and during the instruction time, so you have more than a minute of instructions at the start of the IELTS exam at the listening section. Um, so uh, you need to look at the topics of all the parts as quickly as you can. Don't look at all the questions and all the details. Just look at the topics, okay? So here you see, okay, the next one, uh, what are the two provinces directly west and east of the province of Alberta? Now, hopefully some of you know a little information about Canada. So Vancouver, 2010 Olympics, right? Saskatchewan, Calgary, uh, one of the Winter Olympics there as well, British Columbia, that's where I live. Um, and then Regina, right? So hopefully some of those places are familiar. If not, you could be in a little bit of trouble here with this topic. Um, but um, don't give up. Just realize, okay, this is some place in the world that I'm going to have to visualize, okay? Ratul, Calgary is in Alberta. Alberta is the province. Calgary is a city. Okay, um, all right. Uh, and then uh, you jump to... Uh, Part three, um, part three, we look at, uh, again, a couple of the first few questions, try to see what's going on. So here, why does the student go to see the professor? Right away, I'm the student, I go to see the professor. A hospital, ill, late registration, mm, okay, something's wrong here, trying to figure it out. We look at this big um, table here, or this form, and we notice it's uh, class times, it says, fill out the details of the class syllabus. Okay, so I'm, I'm a student and I'm trying to get some information about my classes. Okay, good. So I see that and then I jump to uh, section four. Um, okay, and then section four, uh, event that happened 65 million years ago, dinosaurs became extinct, Tyrannosaurus rex. T-Rex, large asteroid, um, okay, a little bit more uh, T-Rex, okay? And if you go nice and quick, you can get to this point within one minute. So here I can see that it's a T-Rex. Okay, uh, topic is about a T-Rex here, obviously. What's happening? So there's the T-Rex, okay? Um, I really got to learn how to draw T-Rex for these classes, but uh, anyway, there is my uh, cute little, uh, no, it's a, it's a mean, it's a large mean 
uh, T-Rex here uh, with uh, human-like feet and a tiny little uh, spiky tail. Um, okay, cute little eyes there. Uh, all right, what's going on with this T-Rex? It's got teeth, yes, snarly nose. Um, and uh, hey, uh, I gotta be in here somewhere, so I gotta visualize this. So here I am, woohoo, I am uh, riding the T-Rex. This is my T-Rex, okay? Uh, again, you might think I'm just being silly, but I'm not just being silly. Um, I am visualizing, I'm connecting myself to the information so that I can um, remember, use the information, understand the information. Okay, all right. <laughs> Alicia says, it's a dolphin with legs. <laughs> Yeah, and he says, it's Barney, I guess. I think Barney's a T-Rex. I think Barney's supposed to be a purple T-Rex, right? So it's not bad, Yanni. Um, <laughs> yes. Yes, Sarah, my skills are becoming better with time. <laughs> okay. All right, students. So, uh, by the way, you know, have fun with your IELTS studies um, and uh, drawing little pictures uh, to test your understanding and your visualization is not a bad skill, okay? It's, a, it's good practice. It's fun practice, all right? So um, visualize. Visualizing is very important for the IELTS exam. All right. Okay. I will erase this amazing image forever. Um, okay, students. So again, your first strategy, first step in the IELTS speaking is stay calm, stay focused. As soon as you hear the audio go, welcome to the IELTS exam. This exam is copyrighted by ESOL Examination Cambridge. Um, and you will hear this, okay? Then you go, okay, I gotta look at all of these topics for part one, two, three, four, visualize and uh, get a good idea of what I'm going to be uh, listening to over the next 40 minutes. Okay, so that's your first tip. Then you listen and you answer, okay? The questions, focus on the questions, go with the audio. You only hear it once, you cannot hear it again. If you miss a question, don't worry about it, go to the next question. Just because you missed a question doesn't mean you might not be able to get it. A lot of questions are logical, so you can go back and figure them out after, okay? All right, students, uh, let's get into it. So let's, uh, let's listen, we're, we're going to answer uh, these questions and what I want you to do is put your answers into a separate document or separate sheet. Um, don't share them right away. That can confuse other people, especially if you're giving the wrong answer. So uh, don't put them in the chat. And for all of you, I kind of, I suggest more or less ignoring the chat while we're listening, okay? Uh, just so you don't get confused by other people. Just focus on the audio, focus on the questions. We'll go through the answers after and we'll talk more strategy as we do that, okay? So uh, this is CD2 track one. So again, we go to aehelp.com to get all these materials. Again, join the premium IELTS package by clicking that big red button that's just above my head there. Once you do that, then you can go to your My Student account. Many of you have access, so make sure you use these. Here we have audio CDs, okay? Um, and then here you have all the audio CDs for your course. Uh, this is going to be CD2, uh, track one. So get ready to listen. If you've got a headset, use it. Now's the time, okay? Let's do it. This recording is copyrighted by Two Think One Solutions, Inc. and World ESL Tutors. You will hear several different recordings and you will answer questions on what you hear. There will be time given to read the instructions and questions and you will be given a chance to check your work. The recordings will be played only once. The test is made up of four sections. At the end of the test, you will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Listening section one. You will hear a conversation between two men as one of the men buys a gym membership. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five.
you will see that there is an example. This time only, the conversation relating to this question will be played. Good afternoon. I'm interested in purchasing a gym membership. Of course, sir. What length of membership are you looking for? We have options ranging from one month to two years. Can I get one for three months? I don't want to make too much of a commitment. Of course. The man says he wants a three-month membership, so this answer has been indicated for you. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Good afternoon. I'm interested in purchasing a gym membership. Of course, sir. What length of membership are you looking for? We have options ranging from one month to two years. Can I get one for three months? I don't want to make too much of a commitment. Of course. Before we can get you started on getting into shape, I'm going to need some personal details from you. Certainly. Let's start with your name. William Bacon. Bacon spelled the same as the breakfast food? Yes. B-A-C-O-N. OK, William. Now I need your residential address. Oh, please call me Bill. I feel odd being called William. OK, Bill. So your address then? Right. I live at 1653 Spoonar Street in Liverpool. Oh, I know that street. My grandmother lived there when I was growing up. The street name is spelled with an A, is it not? Yes, that's right. Spoonar is spelled S-P-O-O-N-A-R. And your postcode here in Liverpool? PK387YQ. TK387YQ? No, PK387YQ. Right. Now we need your date of birth. April 9th, 1980. And your telephone numbers, starting with your home number. I don't have a home number, just a mobile number. It is 312. Seven seven eight three nine one. Fine then. Now, do you have any medical issues we should know about, such as asthma? I have no medical concerns. I am in perfect health as far as I know. Now, I need to ask you a few questions to find out what type of gym membership fits your lifestyle the best. There is more than one type of gym membership? Oh yes, there are a number of different options. We have our most basic membership, which allows you to work out on the machines on the main floor of our town centre facility. Then there is our premium membership, which allows members usage of the machines on the second floor of our town centre facility, as well as access to our third floor lounge. What is so special about the machines on the second floor? Nothing really, but our gym is extremely busy, and often the machines on the second floor are the only ones available. However, as I said, they are only open to the premium members. Tell me about the lounge. Our lounge is fantastic. The room is big, about 50 feet by 50 feet, and we have two large televisions and many comfortable chairs. There is also full bar service and a complimentary snack bar. You now have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 6 to 10. That sounds great. Are there any other membership options? Yes, there is one more. We call it the Premium Plus membership and it allows customers to use any of our gym facilities in the country. So if I go to London or Kent or Newcastle, can I use your gyms there? Well, yes, but we don't currently operate a gym in Newcastle. We do, however, operate a total of 22 gyms in England, not including this one in Liverpool. 23 gyms, that's impressive. What is the price difference between these memberships? Well, at your three-month level, the basic membership is £53. The premium is £84 and the premium plus is £95. That's quite a step up from basic to premium. Yes, but it's quite good value for the additional services and location options. 
I'll have to think this over a bit before I make a decision. Just so you know, Bill, we are running a promotion right now. If you sign up another person along with yourself, we will give both of you premium memberships for the price of basic memberships. Wow, that's a great deal. I wonder who I should ask to join with me. Greg loves to work out, but he's already has a gym membership. I could ask Steve, but he's so busy with work all the time. I think I will ask my neighbour Kate. She's been trying to get back into shape after having her baby last autumn. Wonderful. I will see you soon then. Yes, you will. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. It's Mike, and it was a pleasure helping you. I will hopefully be in tomorrow with Kate. Does eleven work? No, sorry, I'm not in until midday. I will see you midday then. That is the end of section one. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. All right, students, and check your answers in that half minute. I'm just hopping back to the website to stop the audio so we can go through the answers before we tackle the next part. Um, students, it's very, very important when you're studying for the IELTS to first of all do several of these listening, um, even if you have good English, do several of these uh, listening practice exams. Um, and again, you can do six full practice exams through your computer-based IELTS practice exams on the website uh, through the uh, lesson videos. You've got uh, the listening section uh, here as well. Um, the reason that you need to uh, do that is because uh, it's important to become familiar with the type of conversations, dialogues, lectures, um, and of course the pacing. So you need to realize that um, when you're doing this live class with me, it's certainly helpful that I'm leading you through the questions. So I'm showing you where we are with the audio, right? So you're getting a sense of the speed and the pacing. And you realize it's very natural. So it's not ESL. It's not like, hello, how are you today? I'm good. Thank you for asking. I'm here to inquire about gym memberships. Lovely. I can help you with that. Let's start with your name, please. So that would be like for ESL students who are kind of starting in English. But IELTS is not an English as a second language exam. Okay, it's not an ESL test. It's an English proficiency test. So you can hear that these two people are just having a really natural kind of conversation with a natural speed. So you need to be ready for that, okay? All right. Um, starting with ESL materials early in your English is fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but just be prepared that IELTS is not an ESL audio. It's not an ESL test, okay? All right. Okay, um, so make sure to do several of these exams and then of course check your answers, check what you got right and more importantly check what you got wrong because you learn from the mistakes, okay? So learn from those mistakes, okay? All right, um, let's go through the answers together and I'll talk a bit more strategy. So uh, first of all, um, in part one you'll notice that for many of the answers, they repeat them two or three times. So be patient, okay? Um, so don't rush. If you don't get it the first time, not a big deal. Pay attention, you might get it the second time. Okay, so uh, the uh, man asks for uh, William's full name. And William says, my name is William Bacon, as in the breakfast food, yes, bacon, B-A-C-O-N, okay? Uh, you need to have the first letter capitalized because it's a name. If it's not a capital, then uh, you will get it wrong, okay? If it's all capital, it's fine, okay? But uh, writing all capital or all big letters is slow, so be careful. It's faster to write with small letters and your spelling is usually more accurate, okay? All right, um, the next one is the address. So where does William live? Um, William says, I live at 1653 something street. Okay. Spoonar, spelt with an A, yes. So it's Spoonar. And again, 
they spell it out very clearly, so pay attention. He says it twice. Spooner, S-P-O-O-N-A-R. Spelt with an A, right? Yes. So not Spooner, but Spooner Street. Okay. The city's Liverpool that's given, and then the postal code. You don't have to worry about spaces. Just get the right letters and numbers, okay? Okay. Uh, Alexi says it's PK387YQ, Fuang, Harjot, Shaifur, they all agree it's PK. And there's even a correction that's made here by the speaker, right? 387YQ. Yes. Good. Date of birth, April 9, 1980. Good residential number. Um, somebody was asking, he doesn't have one, so how do, how do you do that? Well, just state it, right? So residential number. AJ says no residential number. Uh, Chaitali says none. Yeah, so none is the fastest, probably. Uh, always look at um, the instructions. If it says use no more than one word or two words, then be careful. Here we don't have that, so you don't have to worry. No number or none, those are good. Okay. Right? There's no number. He has a mobile number, or I think it's girlfriend's mobile number or something. Uh, medical issues, none. Now, if some of you are for this residential number, number four, if some of you are like, Oh, I was confused and I didn't know what to write and it's not fair. IELTS is a thinking test. Okay, it's testing your thinking and your ability to pay attention during an exam. Keep that in mind, students. So IELTS does not just test your English, but it is also testing your thinking, your logic, your visual ability, your attention, okay, your speed. It's a timed test, right? So why am I saying that right now? You're like, why are you, why are you, why are you saying that? Why are you telling me that, Adrian? Well. It's because look at this one. It says medical issues and he says none. I don't have any medical issues. And the answer in the in your booklet says none. So if you're like, oh, residential number, I didn't know what to put there. Well, look at this question. You can see that that word works here as well, right? Okay. Nipa says, my mom also said that to me. Yeah. So you have a bit of help if you pay attention, okay? Um, really pay attention, students. So oftentimes, uh, in IELTS listening, okay, the um, information that is given uh, can help you figure out uh, answers to questions. So if you miss a question, do not panic. In the um, time to review answers, see if you can find helpful information. Okay, because it could be there. Okay. Uh, AJ, if you leave it blank, um, you will lose that mark. Okay, there's no, there's no such correct answer as leaving it blank and that's the correct answer. Um, no, not on IELTS. So a blank answer is a wrong answer. Good question, AJ. So a blank answer is a wrong answer. Okay. So there's always an answer there. Okay. All right. Uh, let's jump back to it. Question five. Um, IELTS tries to remind you with pictures and diagrams that you have to visualize. You're a human, you use your eyes, you use your vision, you need to see information. So here, um, they have this one question, what does the lounge look like at the gym? And they say it's 50 feet by 50 feet, so immediately we know it's not B or D because neither of those are 50 feet uh, by 50 feet. They're not square. 
So only A um, here and uh, C here are um, square. So it's only going to be one of those two. And usually it's not rocket science as long as, especially in part one, as long as you're paying attention and they say there's uh, lots of seats as opposed to like one seat, right? Um, so we know that the uh, correct answer here is uh, A. Okay, all right, so all of you who got A, not long chairs, we look back, lots of chairs, okay? So lots of chairs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven chairs, snack bar, and so on. Okay, so A is the correct answer. And definitely 50 feet by 50 feet, you know it's either A or C, okay? All right, and then you had to figure out question six. For this question, you need to get both uh, blanks correct. So if you're doing the paper-based exam and you have question six on your answer sheet, it will look like this in the answer sheet. Okay, then um, you should figure out that it is B1 C2. Okay, so in your paper based exam, this is what your answer looks like. Okay, B1, C2. Okay, in your computer-based test, um, I think in some ways the computer-based test is better. Uh, one way that it's better is you don't have to think so much about the way you answer the questions because they're a little bit simpler. You have to just click a button or a dot or drag and drop so it's a little bit more intuitive. The UX, UI is better than on the paper-based exam, right? I mean, it's one of the advantages of technology better UX, UI. So that's what you needed for six. Okay, uh, let's do this here. So question seven to 10, um, these are short answers. Uh, write no more than two words, really pay attention. It, sometimes when it's write no more than two words, then at least one will be two words, okay? All right, um, how many gyms does the company operate in England? Some different answers there. All of you said 23 are correct. 23, yes, it is 23. Okay. Um, the admin says it's 22, not including this one. And then the guy says, oh, so 23. Okay, yeah, because that one's also in England, right? It's 23 in England, so 23, yes. Alexi, well, it's 23. You really have to, again, logic, paying attention to all the details. What is the cost of the premium membership? So they talk about three different costs, the basic, the premium, premium plus. Um, what is the cost of the premium? 84 pounds, yep. Yeah. Don't write pounds because it's given. So do not write words that are in the answer, okay? If you do, IELTS technically marks that wrong because it's like doubling up on the word. So tricky, but don't write the word, okay? All right. Um, who is Bill going to ask uh, to join the gym? Yeah, Alexi, very good. Neighbor is okay. Kate is okay. So both of those are okay. The K has to be big, so make sure it's a very clear capital K. Okay? Kate. Okay? K-A-T-E with a big K. If it's a small K, it's wrong. If you write neighbor Kate, Black Panther, that is also okay. It's two words. It's, it's, uh, it's a sure bet. Okay? What time is Bill meeting Mike the following day? Akusoa says midday. Abiral agrees. Abdul agrees. Yeah, midday. Midday with a hyphen is okay. It is actually one word. So uh, mid. Mid is usually just a prefix. So it joins the word mid 
midday. M I D D A Y midday. Okay. All right, students. Uh, good work. Good work. Um, yeah. Uh, tomorrow midday, Black Panther is good. It's nice and accurate. Absolutely. Midday is enough. Uh, 12 p.m. Bogdan is okay. Yep, that will work. It's a perfect synonym. Perfect synonyms are accepted. Okay, so 12 p.m. works. If you write just 12, probably get it wrong. Careful. All right, Alexi got 9 out of 10. What did you get out of 10? Okay. For part one, your uh, goal uh, should be nine or more, nine plus, okay? Because uh, part one's the easiest, so you really want to get the best score. Ideally, you have a perfect score in part one. So eight is okay, nine is better, 10 is the goal. Anything less than nine or especially less than eight, you have to be really careful. You have to be like, oh, why am I losing three, four marks in part one? Okay, so Uluk Bek, three out of 10 in part one, definitely not the right direction. Okay, definitely not. So you, you do not, students do not sit the IELTS exam until you can consistently get at least seven, eight in part one. Okay, if you cannot get seven or eight in part one, my suggestion is don't sit the IELTS exam. There's no point to spend that much money to just stress out and then have to do it again, okay? If you can't get at least seven, I mean, that's the absolute minimum, but even that is like, mm, um, then you're probably just wasting your money at that time, okay? Be careful. All right, everybody, uh, let's stay the course. Let's get into Part two, so we know that this is about Canada, specifically Calgary, Alberta. Let's put our headphones back on. By the way, your IELTS test center should be doing the listening with headphones. It's uh, standard and it's required, let's do it. We're jumping back to the website. Again, students, um, any red button that you see should take you to the premium package. Except for this one, this red button, if you see this one, you don't see that in every country, but if you see this button, that means you can register for your online at home IELTS exam through IDP through our website, okay? Uh, you can do that I think in about 12 different countries. So if you don't see it, it means it's not available. You can also download the app with the QR code there, just take a picture of that, right? Okay. All right, um, so uh, let's jump to the audio CDs and we'll go to CD2 track two for the next listening. Everybody get ready to listen. Again, don't put your answers in the chat. We'll go through them after. Just listen, answer, and we'll do it together afterwards, okay? Here we go with listening part two. Now turn to section two. Take some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Listening section two. You will hear a recording of a travel show about tourism to Calgary, Canada. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen carefully to the interview and answer questions 11 to 16. Hello, I'm Deborah Sloan and welcome to Hot Spots, the travel show that highlights great tourist spots around the world. Today we have a representative from Calgary, Canada, who is going to tell us a little about the city. Thanks Deborah. Yes, my name is Robert and I'm going to tell you all about the wonderful city of Calgary. Sorry, I hate to interrupt Robert, but can you tell me exactly where Calgary is? I'm sure many of our viewers are wondering. Sure. Calgary is the largest city in the province of Alberta, which is the second most western province in Canada. 
Alberta lies directly east of the province of British Columbia, of which Vancouver is a very well-known tourist destination, and directly west of the province of Saskatchewan, of which Regina is the capital. Canada is a very big place, and that is shown by just how far Calgary is from many of the other major Canadian cities. Calgary is over 1,000 kilometres from Vancouver and over 3,400 kilometres from Toronto, Canada's largest city. Canada is definitely a very spacious country. Yes, indeed. Well, let me tell you a little about Calgary. Calgary is a beautiful city of approximately one million people, situated next to the Rocky Mountains. It is known most, perhaps, for the world-famous Calgary Stampede. Is that with the cowboys and bull riding? Yes, and it's held every July in the city. The Stampede attracts more than a million visitors each year from all over the world. It is referred to as the greatest outdoor show on Earth. Another fact that Calgary is well known for is oil, which was first discovered in the area in 1902. With the boom in oil prices over the past 40 years, Calgary has seen its population grow from 400,000 in 1971 to over 1 million in 2007. In that time period, Calgary was by far the fastest growing city in Canada. Many sports fans will know that Calgary was host to the 1988 Winter Olympics and to this day Calgary remains a winter activity destination with several world-class facilities dedicated to many winter sports from bobsled to curling to speed skating and everything in between. One of Calgary's biggest icons is its hockey team, the Calgary Flames, who play in the National Hockey League or NHL as it's better known. Well, they have been one of the more successful teams in the league during their 30 years in Calgary, even winning the coveted Stanley Cup in 1989. You now have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 17 to 20. On the cultural side of things, Calgary boasts a number of festivals during the year, including a fringe festival, a comedy festival, as well as the Calgary International Film Festival. Calgary is also home to numerous theatre companies, as well as the Calgary Opera, Alberta Ballet, and the Calgary Philharmonic Orchestra. Sorry to interrupt again, Robert. But this programme is called Hotspots. So what's the weather like in Calgary? I've heard it's cold. Yes, in the winter it can be quite cold, but in the summer it is also quite warm, with average summer high temperatures hovering around 23 degrees Celsius, while average winter high temperatures are around minus 2 degrees and routinely go down to minus 20. Calgary experiences something quite unique when it comes to the weather. It has these weather fronts called Chinook winds, which can blow through the city in the winter and temporarily raise the temperature by up to 15 degrees Celsius. These Chinook winds can last anywhere from a few hours to a few days, and they are welcomed with open arms by the people of Calgary. Calgary is also one of the sunniest cities in Canada, as well as one of the driest, which makes up for a lot of the cold weather. Honestly though, if you're looking for a winter getaway to a hot spot, as you say, Calgary is not the place to go. But if you are looking for a winter getaway that includes skiing or snowboarding or anything else done best in the cold weather, nobody does it better than Calgary. Thank you, Robert, for that fascinating look at Calgary. That is the end of section two. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. All right, and again, students, check those answers. A very common mistake is that students don't check the answers. They just kind of stare. Um, okay, uh, so let's stop the audio on the website again and look at the answers. Sarah, thank you for removing answers from the chat um, so that we can all uh, get a better idea of what's going on and an accurate idea of what's going on. Um, all right, so here we go. Uh, look at uh, questions 11 to 12. Okay, this is about the location of uh, Calgary. So it says, what are the two provinces directly west and directly east of the province of Alberta? 
All right, now here you have to be a little bit careful with prepositions. Um, it says match the diagram with the choices below, A, B, C, D, E. If you know a little bit about Canadian geography, that will certainly help you. If not, as long as you pay attention, you can still get it correct, okay? So here, um, 11 is the province where I am. It's where I'm talking to you from right now. Um, D is the correct answer, Rukwe. It's D for 11. So it says uh, Alberta, and the way they say it is Alberta is east of British Columbia. So notice the uh, directional arrows here. It says Alberta is east of British Columbia. So that means British Columbia is west of Alberta. Okay, west and east. Alberta is east of British Columbia. British Columbia is west of Alberta. So D was the correct answer there. Everybody who got that, fantastic. All right. Um, number 12 was uh, Saskatchewan. So they said um, Alberta is west of Saskatchewan. So Saskatchewan is east of Alberta. So you have to really pay attention, okay? So 11 was a D and 12 was a B. Okay, check those, all right? Careful with prepositions. This is where prepositions are quite important. Okay, now here it said 1 million people is the number used to describe two groups in the recording. Whenever you see these quotation marks in uh, the listening, it means that you are going to hear this exact phrase, 1 million people. So you have to tune your ears to listen for 1 million people, okay? And you notice how I took some notes here because it's a double answer. So population of a million, stampede over a million. There's a lot of information here and it takes too much time to look and read all that while the audio is going. So instead of staring at this, okay, like, what happened? Where are we at right now? Um, so don't stare at the choices, okay? Too much information, TMI too much information. Instead of staring at the choices on your note paper, write down what you hear. Okay, Calgary has a million people. Pop, one million. Now, if I'm doing the actual IELTS exam, I'm doing that short form, okay? So my notes on my note paper would be like, pop, one million. Okay, stampede over one million. So I would just go stamp, over one mil, okay? So those would be my notes, all right? And then when I have time, even if I do it at the end, when it says now look at your answers, then I would go back in the 30 seconds and go, okay, the population of Alberta, no. The population of British Columbia, no. The population of Calgary, yes. Okay, so C is one. The number of visitors to the Calgary Stampede each year, yeah, okay, that looks good, all right? So C and D for 13 and 14, okay? Good job, Fuang, you got it, okay? So pick answers that are obvious there, C and D, okay, through notes. If you're just staring at them, it's going to be a problem, all right? Harjot, Ritesh, good. Well done. So multi, multiple choice like this, listen for the answers and take notes. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. Um, these were a little bit easier. Again, I'm listening for the statements, not a question. Obviously, it's not going to appear as a question. Which industry is Calgary well known for? So I'm listening for somebody to say, Calgary is well known or Calgary, Calgary is popular for, and then we get the answer, which is oil. That's right. It's popular, is well known for oil. There's some big oil fields. Okay. 
Which of these events did Calgary host? So here I'm listening for Calgary hosted for number 16. So 15 was B, yes. Don't put oil, put B. And then I'm on to the next question. Calgary hosted or Calgary held the Winter Olympics. Yes, indeed. Canada has some good mountains and snow for the Olympics. Anybody into skiing? Sarah, are you into skiing? Do you ever ski the French Alps? You have some nice mountains there. How about the Himalayas? Any skiing in the Himalayas? Probably not. Those are just some big mountains, but who knows? Maybe. I wonder. I've never thought about that. I've never heard about skiing in the Himalayas in India, but I'd love to try it. <laughs> I bet you there's some big snow there for sure. Maybe the mountains are just too crazy, right? Ritesh says, not at all in the Himalayas. I wonder why. AJ says, no, there's no skiing, unfortunately. Hmm, strange. I wonder if there could be. Could there be skiing in the Himalayas? I wonder. I wonder. Maybe a business idea for somebody. Get crazy. Try something new. Put a ski resort in the Himalayas. I think the mountains are just too high. I think, but there's got to be smaller mountains there too, right? Maybe. Okay. Juan says, no, no snow in Vietnam. No, I wouldn't think there'd be too many uh, ski mountains in, in Vietnam. Dylan says, I don't think there's enough oxygen. The skiers would pass out. Maybe, Dylan. Maybe. Especially if you're up on Everest, right? <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Well, skiing for the Sherpas. <laughs> okay. Um, so then we keep going, right? <clears throat> Number 17. Average summer highs in Calgary reach how many degrees Celsius? So this is number 17. Aberall says 23. Yes, indeed. The answer there was 23. And you don't need Celsius because um, you have the word Celsius here, so you don't need it. Uh, but if you really wanted to, you could put 23 degrees. You could put that little circle there. I know that's probably hard to find in YouTube chat. Uh, but you could do that little little circle. That little circle means degrees. Okay, that's the symbol for degrees. Okay, use a symbol whenever you can. So 23 degrees, yes. 23 degrees what? 23 degrees Celsius, it's given there. Okay, so you don't need Celsius, but if you want, you can put the little circle for degrees. Okay, it's not minus 23 here, Janat. Oh, for, the, for number 18. Yes, Janat, you're a little bit in the future. We're not there yet. Um, okay, let's check it out. So uh, here we go. Paragraph completion. Complete the information below. Write no more than two words and or a number for um, each. Okay, two maximum. Average winter highs in Calgary reach something two degrees minus. Yeah, and students, don't use the symbol here, okay? So do not use like a minus sign, okay? Uh, they might mark that wrong. So you want to actually use the word minus, okay? Uh, why? Because it's a paragraph. So if you have minus, it's just weird. Nobody would ever write it like that, okay? It's confusing. So write the word minus, M-I-N-U-S. Uh, Chinook winds can raise temperatures by up to 15 degrees Celsius and can last anywhere from a few hours to a few, number 19, days. Yes, days. Uh, you need the S, okay, because it's hours, uh, so it's gotta be days, uh, not day. If you say a few day, you'll get it wrong. Okay, so it's got to be days. Watch your plurals. Okay. Calgary is also one of the driest cities in Canada as well as one of the last question here for part two. That's right, hard jot. It's the sunniest. Double N, Alexi. Sunniest. Sunniest. Okay, a lot of you got that. It's good. Yeah, it's, you can hear that double N. It's really strong, right? It's like sunniest. Sun, you don't say sunniest. 
He goes, sunniest, sunniest. Okay. All right. Um, there it is, students. There you have all of your answers and a lot of good strategies to help you along those first couple of parts. How did you do out of 20? Now, um, you should check this as well. So for part one and part two together, your goal should be 16 or more. Again, if you're getting less than 15 in part one and part two, you might want to wait before you sit the IELTS exam because part three, part four are much more difficult. So if you cannot get 15, 16 in part one and two, you might be wasting your money if you need a band 6.5 or higher, okay? <clears throat> so, Nipa, 18 out of 20 is good. Fuang, 16 is good. Ryan, 18 is good, okay? Pima, 15 is absolutely minimum, okay? Harjot says the electricity was gone, so I missed 11 and 12. But hey, Harjot, all considering 17 out of 20, not bad. Okay. Bogdan, 18 is pretty good for sure. It's solid. All right, uh, students. So again, this uh, practice test uh, is coming from our website. It's coming from aehelp.com. You've got six full computer-based practice tests here. Or if you're doing the paper-based test, then print the uh, paper versions here and uh, use the uh, paper-based version, okay? To sign up for the premium course so you can get access to all of these practice exams and so you can follow well with the live classes, uh, click the big red button there just above my head to join the premium version, okay? All right, Alexi, you are extremely welcome. Um, students for general IELTS, it's gieltshelp.com. You'll find that the listening is the same because it's the same for the general and the academic IELTS, but the writing and the reading sections will be different. So general IELTS students go here and click that big red button there, just kind of right above my head for the premium IELTS. Tomorrow I'm back everyone with um, speaking uh, part two, speaking part three for our students. Uh, until then, visit other videos on the YouTube channel. Check out the websites. Sarah, thank you for moderating. That was really helpful. It made that class very effective um, to help students with um, the proper uh, approach and, and um, answers. So great. Thank you for that. Have a lovely day, everybody. You're beautiful people. Smile, chin up, forward, right? That's what you got to do. That's how you live a happy life. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from uh, Victoria, Canada for now. I'll be back tomorrow. Bye, everybody.